bedroom, and this is where Ina and Lena Stellinger were found, the two girls that stayed the night. He runs out, gets the authorities, they go upstairs, find six more bodies. So there's eight total, six kids, two adults. The killer had left the axe against the wall, covered every mirror throughout the house, uh, left raw bacon on the floor in there, food at the table, bloody water by the back door, uh, cigarette butts in the alley, and tons of crime scene. Yeah. They go up to City Hall to get a detective from Kansas City down. When they get back down here, you have half the town just trampling through the house. Um, it was so bad, the National Guard had to come down. They got control of the scene. They were armed, locked and loaded, ready mm -hmm. to go. Then they say, let's take the bodies up to the armory, because this ain't working. We've got to guard them better. So the detective shows up. He's so drunk, they got to sober him up at the motel. By the time anyone gets here, knows what they're doing. Bodies are gone. No crime scene photos, and the crime scene's destroyed. So all you have at that point is questioning people around town. That went on for five years. Um, that's basically a witch hunt. You know, a lot of the TV shows and stuff focus on the same six or seven people, but there's hundreds of suspects. I mean, five years, you know, there's a hundred people on and off the train every day here. <clears throat> Lizzie Borden's uncle lived in Hastings, which is about 30 minutes or so that way. Mm -hmm. He was one of the first suspects. Uh, the state senator, different vagrants, you name it. Throughout those five years, a little minister named Reverend Cutley comes into the picture. This guy was a self-ordained schizophrenic minister who thought you had to commit the sins to get inspiration for sermons. Big reputation around here. The newspaper said Kelly's not a nut. He's a wheelbarrow full of nuts. So he's down here going, yeah, I work for the Queen of England as her personal detective. I could solve this. And like, Kelly, we invited you down. We know where you live. You don't work for the Queen. He got booted out of the motel for reenacting the murders on the, the guests in the front lobby. So he's just going up to random people, acting like he's killing them with an axe. Um, hounding the governor of Iowa, saying, you owe me all this money for the de detective work I've done. Ends up, he gets arrested, and they interrogate him, and he confesses to this whole thing. He said he woke up, heard a voice saying, rise, Peter, slay, and eat. Went for a walk to study a sermon called Slay Utterly. Ended up across the street, followed a shadow to the shed out there. The shadow said, I am the door. Uh, handed him the axe. He came in this door at one in the morning. Heard a voice saying, let there be light, and there's scripture writing on all the walls. Went around the corner, climbed Jacob's ladder to heaven, ended up in the kids' room. A voice said, suffer the children unto me, and he goes, I killed everybody. And then he goes, what? I didn't say that. Everybody's saying, I said that I must have. I have no idea what I do. You know, instantly went off the deep end. They tried him for the death of Lena, ended with a hung jury, tried him for the death of Ina, full acquittal. And at this point, five years have gone by. A lot of suspects, a lot of scenarios, a lot of theories behind them. They were all pretty good, but they were all dismissed by the DA. So the one person that we finally even got enough to go to trial is acquitted. The war started, attention went towards the troops, and the state of Iowa's not going to fund these detectives for 20 years. I mean, it's just done at this point, sadly. So 102 years later, some think he hid in the attic, some say he hid in the barn, some say there are two of them. In 94, the town's going to bulldoze this whole thing. And Darwin Lynn, who owned the museum, said, you know, it's horrible, but it's history. It's no different than Gettysburg or Thanksgiving or the founding of America when everybody was so hungry they ate each other. <laughs> you know, history is horrible. So he bought it, and his wife said, well, if you insist on doing this, this is out of your pocket money for the taxpayers, no grants were paying for it. So it's still private property funded by you guys, so thanks for coming. Um, and pretty soon people said, well, we want to stay at night. And he said, what? Why do you want to know? It's not happening. He finally allowed people, they started uploading stuff to the internet, Travel Channel did the top ten most terrifying places, put it number one. From there comes Paranormal State, Ghost Avengers, Ghost Lab, Dead Files, Amy Files, Sci-Fi, Travel Channel. Uh, the movie Sinister, Rachel Ray, which is bizarre to me. <laughs> yeah. Just on and on. And we've turned down a lot, too, because we don't want to be cheesy. You know, we want to respect what happened to this family above anything. <laughs> but every one of us has had weird experiences. So that's kind of the 100 years and 10 minutes. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Usually everybody's heads are about to explode, and they just want to go look around the house at this point. Um, but as you go around, there'll be picture frames and each room stating who was where. And 
it's kind of like you do your own thing. So, have it. Take pictures, have fun. <laughs> and there's no electricity here, huh? Uh, we got the air conditioners and, and stuff are run from a pole outside. So there's still technically no electricity in the house. It was so hot that we had to do something. But yeah, then on the, being in the historical uh, registry now, it's all got to be done a certain way. Thank <laughs> you.